Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to Pie in the Sky Tours. My channel aims to bring you quality setups, tutorials, tips, guides and tours from Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So do check out my other videos. And please do like and subscribe if you enjoy the content as it helps others find my channel too. Today we're going to be looking at a brand new update for the new OpenXR Toolkit which can be used to upscale the VR image in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. This is actually an update of the NIS Scaler tool, which is the same tool, but it's been rebranded. I'm pleased to say that I've been coordinating with Matt, who is the developer of this amazing tool, to bring you this exclusive video tutorial. So do make sure to hit that notification bell and be the first to see future updates. As you may know, the NIS Scaler tool really helped a lot of us with improving the performance and clarity of VR, and this update is really exciting. So what's new? The new build, called the OpenXR Toolkit has a few more tools and features the NIS Scaler tool as well as another option called the FSR tool which I will show you in this video. Like I said it's been rebranded and there is a detailed website which goes through release notes, build information and detailed instructions on how to use it and I'll leave a link to that in the video description. Hopefully by watching this basic setup video you'll be up and running in no time. There's a new experimental hand tracking feature included in the OpenXR Toolkit I won't be covering this today, as it really does need its own dedicated video. If you want to learn more about the hand tracking tool, you can check out the Discord server for more information. Again, I'll leave a link to this in the video description. Just to be clear, this software provides a collection of useful features to customise and improve existing OpenXR applications when using VR. These include settings for render upscaling and sharpening, hand tracking to control or input simulation on supported devices only, and other game enhancing tweaks. This software may be used with any brand of VR headset as long as the target application is developed using OpenXR. This software may be used with any GPU compatible with DirectX 11 and above. Before I go through the installation and how to use the app, I want to go through a few features which will hopefully answer any questions you have when updating it. It works with almost all headsets. At this time, there's a known issue with the Vio Aero, which the team are trying to fix. But don't worry if you're an Aero user, you'll be the first to hear about this on the channel. It works with any GPU, and IS works with both NVIDIA and AMD cards, and FSR works with NVIDIA cards. The tool supports both DX11 and DX12 with a SIM. However, DX12 is considered experimental, just like it is in the SIM. It'll work with Microsoft Flight Simulator, whether it's the Microsoft Store version or Steam version. It's only expected to work with the simulator at this time, and no other applications or games will work with this tool. Before installing, the first thing you need to do is uninstall any versions of the NIS Scaler tool, that you've previously used. You can then go ahead and download the app via the website as seen here. You can then run the installer of the OpenXR Toolkit Companion Pack. And next you just go through the installation by clicking next, agree to the terms and confirm. And next you just click yes to open it and run it and now it's installed. Now you can see the toolkit with the new logo which looks great. Next you should restart your PC. Next I'm going to show you how to use the app. Here you can see the OpenXR Companion app main window. It will display a green or red status indicating whether the software is activated. This is the OpenXR Toolkit menu but you won't be using this Companion app much outside of VR. But you can see here you can disable the OpenXR Toolkit, enable safe mode which is good for recovery, enable experimental settings which is good for more advanced stuff and you can enable screenshots using Control F12. The main feature of this menu is the fact that you can actually change the menu hotkeys. So on the bottom you can see it says left, down and right. The default is F1, F2, F3 and the modifier is Control or Alt. Now I choose Control which is the default setting. And you just hold down Control and you press F1 to go left or F2 to go down or F3 to go right within the menu in the VR headset. It can be a bit tricky to use at the beginning but just be patient and you'll get used to it. You'll notice that in the OpenXR developer tool the API layers are labeled with API layer underscore November underscore toolkit. That's how you know that it's functioning in your VR. And if you want to just disable it, you just go back to the main companion app and click on disable, or you can just uninstall it. The companion app may be used sporadically to enable or disable advanced features or perform recovery. The actual settings for the toolkit are available from within your OpenXR application. You don't need to open the companion app to use the software and to manage the settings. And do make sure you've set the OpenXR Developer Tool to 100 render resolution before using the OpenXR Toolkit. To use the Companion app within VR, which is where all the menus are, you first need to go into the sim. When you're in the main menu of the sim, you just press Control plus F2 
and this brings up the menu. You'll see the menu on the top left hand side in your VR, but you only have 10 seconds to activate it and then it times out. So it might take you a few tries to get this right. Once you successfully activate the menus, you'll see the menus look like this within your VR. You can scroll down by using Control plus F2 unless you've changed it. And you can change values with the left and right, the Control plus F1 or the Control plus F3. And you can use Shift to scroll faster through the menus and through the values. The first item on the menu is Overlay. This actually displays the FPS as an overlay. It does cost you a bit in terms of frames to actually see the measurements, but it might be worth doing it while you're testing it. I didn't actually use this, but it's there if you need it. And the next item is Upscaling, which is the main tool we're going to be using to enhance our VR experience. Upscaling is what you use to select either NIS or FSR. This is only visible when upscaling is enabled. This will both render at a lower resolution and upscale and sharpen the image. Just experiment with these two settings and see which one you prefer. The upscaling factor is the percentage of magnification of the rendering resolution. The resolution displayed next to the percentage is the effective resolution that the application sees. Any changes here require a restart of the VR session. Remember, this will only be visible in the menu when you've got upscaling enabled. The sharpness factor has a different scale and effect when it's used with the NIS and the FSR. So again, experiment with this setting too in combination with the factor. And the rest of the features you don't really need to use for this specific purpose. And they are the world scale, which is the inter-camera distance override, which can be used to alter the world scale. Prediction dampening. This is the prediction override, which can be used to dampen the prediction for head, controllers, and hand movements. Font size is the size of the text for this menu. Menu timeout, like I said at the beginning, this is the duration after which the menu automatically disappears when there is no input. So basically, I would just set that to long. And the last thing is the menu eye offset. This adjusts the rendering of the menu until the text appears clear. If you're seeing double of the menu text right now, just mess around with this option and you should be able to straighten it out. So just spend some time experimenting with the upscaling options. Go into the NIS and change the values there. Go into the FSR, change the values there. And see what you like. Remember, they're two separate settings. They don't work together. So for example, you try out the NIS settings at 80 and 60 like I've got. And then you go into the sim and you fly. And you come back into this menu and you try different settings using the FSR tool. And then you go back into the sim and you fly. So now that you've tried both the NIS and the FSR settings, you could just choose whichever one you prefer, mess around with the factor and the sharpness, dial it in and forget about it. You don't need to actually open the companion each time you fly to use the setting in VR. And those are the basics of using the app. There are more options in this app, but I didn't want to go through everything in this video. The main point of this video is to get you guys up and running with this amazing tool in the easiest and quickest way possible. None of us want to spend all day doing the settings. We just want to fly. And I think this is a great solution for improving your VR. After experimenting using my HP Reverb G2, I'm finding that the following settings work best in terms of improving the clarity and performance on my PC when using the SIM in VR. You can always check your settings with the FPS counter running in the app, but remember not to rely on these numbers. It's more about the feel and look of VR, which is actually still pretty subjective. So don't feel like you have to use the NIS upscaling tool. Try the FSR one too. You can see here that I've chosen the FSR as my default now, just because I'm getting better performance and clarity using this one. So again, go ahead and try it. As you may already know, I tend to go for a balance between clarity and performance. And these settings give me just that. So go ahead and try my recommended settings and just adjust accordingly. All of my VR driver settings, in-game settings, and headset settings are the same as in my setup videos, so I'll leave a link for that too. Here's a snapshot of my NVIDIA control panel, so you can see all my different settings there. My global setting for the NIS image scaler is set to off, so just make sure that that's set to off. For more support, I encourage you to visit the new Discord server. I've left a link in the video description for your reference. I do hope this video tutorial gets you up and running with this wonderful VR tool. And let me know if you have any questions or comments below. If you want to improve your VR experience further, I recommend watching my Reverb G2, Vario Aero, or Quest VR settings videos, depending on which headset you have. Thanks for your support, and I appreciate your comments and interaction on the channel. As always, I hope you find this content useful, I look forward to making the next video soon. In the meantime, as always, take care and stay safe.